You're listening to Shoe In, covering the ins and outs of all things footwear, from sneakers to heels, loafers to slippers, and every type of shoe in between. Brought to you by the FDRA, the Footwear Industries Association focused on retail, trade, politics, and fashion. Helping create and enhance conversations on all things footwear. And now your footwear insiders, Matt Priest and Andy Polk. All our beautiful footwear fans, welcome back to the show. Matt, nice to see you again. Good to see you, Andy. I'm doing great, man. How are you? Awesome. Great. Uh... With the holidays just around the corner, and we're you know we're falls in full swing, we want to bring in our good friend Matt Power from the NPD Group to one talk a little bit about outdoor trends that he's seeing, yep. um, both in terms of product and, and retail, um, and then give us a holiday preview right yeah. before Santa comes and Passover happens, and we got candles. Passovers in the spring, but yes. Well, I messed that up, didn't I? <laughs> <laughs> He's going to do a full year forecast. Perfect. Get out your crystal then ball, back to everybody. School 2020 people. And then Maybe I should say Hanukkah. There you go. I was getting it somewhere, right? You got it. Well, these things happen after you tape eight shows in a row. This so. is true. <laughs> <laughs> That's true. Matt, welcome back to the show. How are you doing? Great. Uh, great. Thanks for having me. Yeah, of course. Let's jump right into it, Matt. Um, you know, we've had you on before and talked about outdoor uh, trends and issues. And one thing you said in the past was a lack of innovation and in product uh, was really kind of crippling the industry a little bit. Have they gotten any better? Have you seen anything new, fresh uh, that's kind of driving the market out there? Well, I think we can break it into a couple of pieces. The the what we call fashion cold weather boot business was really, really good last year. And there was a lot of really tremendous products from brands like Sorel and, and uh, to name a couple, not to leave anybody out, but, um, and the early look at those categories, July and August, both showed some nice increases here. And when we're really not in the cold weather boot season yet. Um, so I, I would tell you that I think on that category, the product must look pretty good or she wouldn't be buying it right now. Um, of course, there's always a wild card in weather, and we had really a perfect year for weather last year. It was cold and snowing in October. Customer came out early. Uh, many products sold out before before Christmas and, and made a very profitable season for everybody. So that piece of the outdoor business looks good. The, the hiking side of the business really still needs, I think, some new ideas. And um, sales there are up a little bit, um, which is encouraging. But uh, when I look at the product on the wall there, it's still a ton of sameness in the uh, in the low-cut brown uh, hiker looks. Yeah, so Matt, um, one of the things I'll be doing here very soon, and I'm trying to keep this evergreen, um, but celebrating my anniversary. But you don't want it evergreen. You want you want colors in the leaves. I do want colors in the leaves, but I will be celebrating my 20th anniversary with my, with my wife by hiking in your neck of the woods up in Maine. And so if you're to think to yourself, what what brand of boot is out there that's really hot? You did mention Sorel for the women's side last year, but who are who are kind of the heat seekers, the top the top trending brands in the outdoor space right now? And who should I go pick up for my big epic trip? Well, the smaller brands are still getting a lot of attention, and those brands that have brought in um, a more of an athletic uh, aesthetic and try to say that as quickly. Um, uh, but, uh, you know, I think the, the, the blending of, of uh, athletic and outdoor continues to happen. Um, lighter weights, brighter colors. Um, so there, there's a lot of interesting product out there. Um, Ovo has had a good year last year. I expect that they will turn around again and have another good one. Um, Merrill is starting to show some signs of life. Uh, so, they, you know, there, uh, but I, at the same time, I really feel like we still need a, a whole lot of thought process around fresh new product in, uh, in, in the hiking space. Is that is that trend that you just highlighted, this kind of merging of outdoor and athletic a- aesthetics, um, is that the you know the bringing in of Peter Rupi at Columbia Sportswear? Is that what they were are going for with his hiring and some of the new? We've are, we're starting to see this urbanization of outdoor. Um, is yep. that is that trying to latch on to that trend line that you just highlighted? Absolutely, I think, uh, and we've seen the athletic brands come out with sneaker boots, um, taking iconic sneaker styles and making them with a boot outsole. Um, and, uh, you know, the, and, and look, we're seeing the same thing happen on the dress shoe side. We look at Colhan today and how, you know, they virtually are an athletic brand at this point and it's great product. So, uh, 
I think people are, have become used to wearing lightweight, comfortable, flexible uh, footwear for their athletic needs, and they want to have that same uh, level of comfort for uh, for all of their other footwear needs as well. Why don't you tell us where Athletic is right now? What what are some hot brands that you see? What are some trends in Athletic as well? I mean, since you're on on the phone with us, we might as well get your take on Athletic. Yeah, the, the smaller brands continue to outperform in Athletic. The hot, hottest brands in the market: Vans, Fila, Puma, Reebok is coming up. Champion. Uh, growing like crazy right now in footwear. Um, and, uh, you know, we've talked about this before. I think the consumer wants unique product. I think they want product that that helps them to differentiate from their friends and yet not get too far um, away from the, the core idea. Um, and the smaller brands, I think, are offering that up. Um, and we see the same thing in apparel, by the way, that the smaller brands have started to really get some traction. Um, Nike is is okay. Uh, Adidas is softish. Um, Jordan is just okay. Um, uh, Asics is starting to show a little bit of signs of life uh, mm-hmm. after several years of uh, trending downward. So it, it, it's it's kind of a mixed bag out there. July was down. Um, August looks like it's going to be up a tick or two, um, uh, probably flattish for the for the first two months, and it's all going to come down to September as it always does. Yeah. What about um, recently? I read an article where Dick Johnson, the CEO for Foot Locker, was asked about recession fears and whether he saw that in their in their revenue lines. And he said, so far, they haven't really seen any blips where you know they've seen a hit or uh, as far as for you know as far as their businesses. And of course, they're always very robust and ahead of the ahead of the curve, but they don't see anything like that. Do you? When you when you look at these economic issues, we all see broadly, um, you know, housing starts and all these different things that come up, wages and employment. Obviously, we we it, we look at it. We have very strong fundamental economy, but then you got people who just are a little bit squeamish or afraid that recession's coming around. Are you hearing executives talk about that in any way? Well, we just did some work around that. We published a, a brief paper on it the other day, and and the you know the the premise there is that. The true discretionary categories, and I, I would actually put footwear as a discretionary category. Look, you, you always need one pair of shoes, but you don't need 10, right? And you don't right. need to buy one every month, and that's what the business is really based on. Um, in a recession, the discretionary categories are the ones that go backwards first. Um, my bigger sphere is, is, and there are some economic indicators that are out there that would, would say that we're all approaching, you know, unemployment low is a very much of a leading indicator on a recession as an example. Um, my bigger fear is just people being afraid of a recession. Yeah. Um, and uh, so our, our partner, a civic scientist, has done some work around this where they're showing, you know, the consumer's really concerned, they're, they're, and they're saying that if there is a recession, they're going to cut way back on their spending, they're going to pay more attention to price, and, and so forth and so on. And so sometimes it's the fear um, uh, rather than the actuality that, uh, that moves uh, the consumer. Yeah, and that fear, if it creates... A reduction in consumer spending for a consuming economy, it's a self-fulfilling prophecy. It creates a recession. Correct. So um, so setting that aside or maybe using it as as influence on your the answer to the next, this next question is, how are you feeling about holiday? Are you feeling like flat, you know, low single digits? How are you? And this is specific to footwear. How are you feeling about it? Yeah, this is, so the year so far, we're, we're flattish, maybe down at 50, and um, uh, I haven't seen the final August numbers yet, so I'm, I'm being a little vague on that. But um, I, I'm not optimistic. I think we've got some real headwinds here. Um, we've got a huge, easy business to offset, um, and uh, Adidas says they don't plan to grow that business this year. Uh, we've got a massive Jordan release um, right around Christmas that uh, will be difficult to offset. The number one selling shoe last year in the U.S. was a Nike Tangent. It's running negatively more than a third now. Um, so there, so there's, so, and, and we had a perfect storm around weather. Um, and so there, there needs everything really needs to line up. And I'm looking at the product today and talking to retailers, and no one's talking to me about a hot item. Um, there are certainly items that are out there that are doing nicely, they're growing, but I'm not hearing people say, boy, I wish I had twice, ten times that much of, uh, of, of this shoe. Uh, there just isn't anything that's really exciting in the market right now. So There's... I'm I'm, uh, I'm relatively pessimistic. Uh, um, I'm looking at a down-low single probably for holidays, what, huh. what, what I'm projecting. That's interesting because, uh, I mean, 
we oftentimes don't talk about it, but just like there's anchor stores in a mall, there's definitely anchor product that you promote on your front of your circular, on your website, something like that. So if there's not that, then obviously it's making it a lot harder to try to attract traffic to come in, right? Yes, exactly. And then I think you have to layer in how hard the brands are pushing DTC right now. And, and, and most of the brands who are pushing hard on DTC are doing it by price. Right. Um, and this is, this is continues to be a national market led by the brands. And um, that doesn't bode well for their wholesale partners. Talk about the – you just dropped this Yeezy and then the Jordan release. Can you kind of walk us through that in more detail? Because those are obviously brands that people care a lot about, have a lot of buzz around them, particularly in the social media space. And you've all – you've all one of the things I love about you, Matt, is one, your name. And secondly, that you're a critical thinker <laughs> around these things <laughs> that generate a lot of buzz – but don't move a lot of units or don't, you know, these it's don't kind of shift the industry in dramatic ways, but walk us through what you're, what you're thinking on the Yeezy and Jordan side. Well, you know, the Yeezy had been really been driven by scarcity um, as had Jordan for, for decades and um, selling out on a Saturday, uh, selling out on release day um, would bring kids back to the next time there was another release and would sell tangential product uh, as well. Um, and, you know, in 16 and 17, Nike put a lot more Jordan in the market than they had typically done. Um, and we saw shoes not selling out on the Saturday morning, and we saw the retail market for those shoes uh, uh, really start to decline. Um, Yeezy was good through most of 17, I'm sorry, most of 18, but then um, at holiday, and I don't have this exact number, but I've been, been told it was a million pairs. Uh, when they shift over a six-week period. Um, and with each progressive launch, the retail prices will got lower. It took longer for the shoes to sell out. Um, and I think that uh, Adidas realized they were pushing too much and it's pushing it too hard and it started to pull back. And that was in, that's in, their, in line with their decision not to grow Yeezy this year. And I think they're spreading it out. Um, I think that we saw more Yeezy released in the first half than we did a year ago. Um, which means to me that they'll, if, if they're not growing, they'll release less in the second half, um, and it will be difficult for retailers to offset that. Yeah, and um, I, it, scarcity is uh, scarcity is still a huge motivator in this marketplace. Look, and, and uh, frankly, I think other industries are figuring this out. Right? Look at what happened Popeyes in this uh, chicken sandwich thing, and uh, you know uh, they got so much buzz out of something that sold out um, <laughs> uh, that. Uh, it brings tremendous brand equity. Yeah, I, I, I totally agree with you on that. And maybe that goes to our next brand. I'm really interested just interested in how you feel the sales of Big Baller brand will be this holiday season. <laughs> <laughs> I couldn't even ask it with a straight face because I, I saw your tweet, I think it was last week, where it was like an I told you so moment for Matt, one Matt Powell. And uh, I had to ask that question, uh, try to get it in with a straight face, but I couldn't pull it off. <laughs> So uh, the smaller brands are, are just white hot right now, man. And I think they're, for the most part, doing a really good job of managing their, the marketplace. And I, I've talked a lot about this. To, to, to me, the single most important thing for a brand today is to manage the marketplace. Um, nobody ever went out of business by selling out of stuff. Um, plenty of people have gone out of business because they made too much. And, uh, and, and so it, it may mean lower growth than, the, than Wall Street wants to see, but, but it's healthy growth. And, and so I, I, it's really incumbent on every brand to make sure that supply is kept below demand, that uh, the consumers left, left wanting and, uh, and come back the next year for more. That's why I'm creating a fried chicken footwear, Matt. Or do you want to go in with me so we can create something that will sell out? I'm, I'm in. There we go. Finally. This is the first time anyone has gone into an idea with me. Perfect. Let's do it. And Jazz was saying, yeah, shaking her head. Is this get that later, related exactly. to barbecue shoes? No, I, that's I've not- invested in that, and I'm still waiting for my return. <laughs> well, sometimes you make bad investments. That's what happens. True. It's a risky market. True. you know. Very much. Maybe that will come Scarcity, back in vogue. meaning never seen a product. It's that scary. Well, listen, I'll be honest. I do know how to cook chicken, fried chicken. Okay, good. So, good, good, good. You know, this can be a winner. A count, winner. count me in. Exactly. All right, Matt, thank you so much for, for joining us and talking about that. Before you go, uh, we're going to flip it over to Jasmine for her fashion footwear and focus segment where she'll tell us something in fashion that she sees and we'll all weigh in on it. So, Jasmine, tell us what's on your mind this week. Um, so there's there's a lot of new releases. Um, Matt actually has on Daybreak, I think is what it's called, collaboration with Nike. 
Um, and there's like a lot of different versions that are coming Undercover. out. Undercover. Undercover, okay. Right. Um, and they have like a lot of different colorways that are coming out. There's like um, a green, yellow, and orange one coming out, and um, some coming out in September. There's like an all white one, all black. So I feel like Nike might heat up, in my opinion. I don't know if that's really true or not, but they're starting to come out with some cool stuff. And Jordan has um, a NYX collaboration um, with their Jordan 3s that's coming out in September as well. Um, so I think there's like some cool stuff um from them i don't know if anybody has checked out any of the new releases but just getting your opinion on um some of the new releases coming up from nike and jordan well i, I think the product is great I, I think the real challenge for every brand and i and i talk a lot to them about this topic is selling out of five thousand pairs of, uh, of is easy right uh, you can make an air mat and somebody would buy it and so um if you only made five thousand pairs the, the but it takes as much work to develop and, and create a 5,000 pair run as it does to make a 500,000 pair run. Right. Uh, I talked to a brand recently who told me they made more samples than they made shoes to sell. And trust me, you don't make money doing that. Um, so uh, it's really incumbent on the brands to figure out, okay, this worked. The, you mentioned the, you know, the yellow and orange and the, you know, okay, so let's take that colorway and do it in a more commercial shoe, in a more commercial number. Yeah. And that's how we really start to make money is, is not so selling out of 5,000 pairs of things, but selling out of 15 and 500,000 pairs of things. Yeah, Yeah, I think that's a real challenge because the smart brands can take existing molds and do something a little bit creative, additive here or there and move it around. Maybe it's not something completely different, but you're adding just enough to where if you're selling out of 100,000 pairs, maybe you can get the other 100,000 didn't get it to go for something a little bit different with a different, a different, a, a different twist or color to the upper. Exactly. Exactly. Take hey, an element of the original product and, and make it more commercial. Yeah. Matt, thank you so much for joining us as always. Uh, we appreciate your uh, your coming on the show and, and sharing your thoughts uh, as you look at the industry every single day in outdoor, athletic, etc. cetera. Uh, appreciate you coming on. Yeah, glad to do it. Didn't call me anytime. Great. Folks, this is the Shoe and Show. We're covering the ins and outs of all things footwear, uh, especially on the business side. Uh, you just heard from Matt Powell of the NPD Group, uh, who is one of the specialists in our industry on athletic and outdoor shoes in particular. Uh, if you have topics or ideas you'd like to hear us discuss, if you have ideas for guests you'd like to hear on the show, please drop us a line at shoeandshow.com. Of course, you can find us on iTunes, on Spotify, anywhere there are podcasts being played. You can... Plug right into your ears, the Shoe In Show, the Footwear and Shoes podcast. Thank you very much for listening, and until next time, Shoe In is out. Shoe In has been brought to you by the FDRA, the Footwear Industries Association focused on retail, trade, politics, and fashion, helping create and enhance conversations on all things footwear. For information about FDRA, visit FDRA.org.